Good morning, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me okay. We're just getting the webinar started. Um, I'm just going to go through a few things with you. The first thing to say is that this is being recorded, just to let you know that straight off. Um, and I hope you're all feeling okay this morning. Thanks very much for coming along and spending this time with me. Um, it's important for me to uh, have the opportunity to let you know about these things at the moment, I think, because we're coming into the start of a new year. And I think helping you to understand more about how to grow your influence in 2021 is going to make a real difference to you. And I'll go through some of the reasons why I think that is. Also, just to say that this is new software for me, so if there's any teething problems, uh, please let me know in the chat. Um, I hope you can all see the chat facility. So please let me know if there's um, any problems uh, and if you need me to help you with anything else. One of the things about influence that's so important is stepping outside your comfort zone. So while I generally enjoy presenting, this is new software, as I say, so it's nice to sort of see growing your influence in action with me trying this this morning. So I'll go through a little bit about what we're going to learn together today, and then I'll get straight into some of the important tips. What's really important is that when we're thinking about how to grow our influence, uh, we think about it strategically. So there's a lot of people who want to grow their influence and don't quite know how to do it, but they're not necessarily strategic about the way in which they grow their influence. And what I mean by strategic is that they take the time to really think about how they're going to grow their influence over time and what are the most important influence techniques for them. So like anything, influence is something, but anything important, influence is something that you need to work on and learn about over time. And even though I've been studying it for quite a few years, it's something I, I learn about every single week. So this webinar is going to be 30 minutes long. So I've only got a short bit of time with you today. Um, but I hope it will be a boost uh, to you as you enter the new year. So to introduce myself a little bit first, my name's Alex Swallow and I'm the influence expert. And I pe help people to grow their influence so that they can have a bigger impact on the world. And that impact is really important. You have to think what it is that you actually want to do with your influence. So if you had a lot of influence, what is it that you would do with that influence? It's not just about somehow acquiring influence or acquiring some sort of power and then being like, oh, what do I do with it? You need to think first about what you want your impact on the world to be. And there's a number of reasons why that's important. One of them is it will be a motivating factor for you. So that if you can think about the impact that you want to have on the world, it's probable that you will then be able to motivate yourself that bit more to growing your influence over time, which as I say, definitely takes some time. So it's really important to think about your impact first. What I'm going to do is I'm going to explore the idea of how you can have more influence in 2021. And I'm going to do that by showing with you a short presentation. Uh, the presentation is going to have five key tips that I'll go through, which I believe will help you to grow your influence over the coming year. And then at the end of that, I'm going to give you a very short exercise and you can do that exercise either along with me right at the end of the call, or you can just write the ideas down and then do it yourself in your own time. So I hope basically by the end of this call, you'll have some better ideas about what influence is, you'll have some better ideas about how you can apply it to your life in 2021, and you'll have at least one practical thing that you can do so that you really get something out of this short webinar. The final thing that I really want to say um, is why I think influence is generally important to you and why it really matters going into this next year. I think that history has given us an opportunity as never before to reach out to people as I'm doing now, um, to reach out to people online uh, for very little cost, to reach out to a wide variety of people you might never have met in real life, and to spread the ideas that you think are important to be shared with the world. 
And so I think that at this moment in human history, we all have more of an opportunity than we ever had before to share those messages and to be a positive influence on the world and on each other. We have a great opportunity to learn from other people and we have a great opportunity to share our own knowledge and our own journey. But I think that at the moment, not enough people know how to influence other people effectively. And also a lot of people feel that, especially with the difficult year a lot of us have had, that their influence on the world is pretty minimal. So I think carrying forward for a positive message into 2021, that we can actually do something in the world and have an influence, however small, on however small an amount of people, or however um, small a cause or local a cause, but we can really have an impact on something if we learn to grow our influence effectively. So now I'm going to share with you the presentation. And again, if it doesn't come up on your screens, please let me know in the chat. The presentation, how to grow your influence in 2021. And there's a total of six slides. So we're gonna go through five ways. There's many more ways, and I'll give you a resource near the end that you can use to think about some of those more ways. And hopefully, you can apply the things I'm talking about to your own situation. So in every case, try to think about how this could be applied to a situation that you're wrestling with in your life at the moment, in which you want to get more influence and have more of an impact on something. So. The first slide and the first thing that I want to talk to you about is how important it is to simply have the intention to grow your influence in the first place. The most important difference you can make is to have the clear intention to grow your influence. And then you need to take the time to put your plans into action. That's because no matter what we want to do and how we want to influence other people, firstly, having that intention, actually taking the time to think about it will really make a difference. Um, with influence, I think many people in their careers and in their lives, they just acquire influence over time. So they'll do certain things that will help them to acquire influence. And those things might be things like, as they go through life, they get more used to talking to other people so they get more influence. As they go through life, they um, meet more influential people who they can then influence, so they grow their influence. As they go through life, they get better at speaking to an audience, or their writing gets better, or their ability to persuade other, others get better, and so they get better at influence. But when they're getting better at influence, they're not necessarily doing that in a strategic way. And what I'm saying is that I think you need to think, have the intention to do it, and then try to do it in a strategic way, just like anything else, just like any other important skill. And the final thing that I want to say on this slide is that the best time to grow your influence is right now. So whatever you've done in the past, whatever influence you already have, um, whether you feel that you've achieved in your career or not, and whether you feel that things are going right in your life or not, this is the opportunity, this is the right time to start. It's the right time to start because, like the famous saying goes, you know, about the best time being to uh, plant a tree, um, it's better just to get on with it, and as soon as you've planted it, it's better. But the same with this, that's the first reason. As soon as you begin to grow your influence, it's better. And then the second thing is, is that, as I've just explained, it's really important and amazing time in human history where we have the opportunity to reach out to a wider range of people and influence them than people were able to before. Okay. So number one, having the intention to grow your influence. Number two is about having more focus. So I've said about the importance of having a strategy and sticking to it. And like anything else that might be important to you in your life, growing your influence needs to become a habit. So whatever things you want to do in your life, whether you want to um, quit smoking, uh, whether you want to lose some weight, um, which is something that I've done this year. So I've been thinking about strategies and what helped me. Um, whether you want to um, grow your learning in a particular area, like you're taking a course, it needs to really become a habit for it to make a difference in your life. So growing your influence can't be something that just once a year, 
you pick up and you think, oh, how can I grow my influence? It needs to be a much more regular occurrence. You need to be thinking to yourself, how am I progressing in this area? What am I using to measure how I'm progressing in this area? And how can I move forward from that? How can I get better? And so then I've put just a few examples of some of the things that might be the things that you might work on to grow your influence. So one thing that really helps people to grow their influence is knowing their story and the message that they want to share with the world. So that message could be as simple as how you introduce yourself when you meet other people. How if you meet people in real life, which is, of course, much more difficult for most of us to do at the moment. But let's say you meet them on a, a Zoom call um, or you meet them at some sort of networking event. How would you introduce yourself? And it might also be how you present yourself online. How do you present your story in a way that people will understand you? And how do you tailor your messaging to support that story and what you want to achieve? Another thing which I've listed there is trying to grow your presence online. So your presence online might be through social media platforms. It could be through um, a website. Um, there's a great variety of ways like podcasts and videos that are exciting ways to get your message out there and to grow your influence. And then the final one I put is improving the way in which you relate to other people. So influence can obviously be online or offline and just the way in which you interact with other people, the way that you try to understand other people and what it is that they want and what it is that motivates them, um, the way in which you try to get people to hopefully like you, to want to do business with you, to understand what it is that you want to achieve in the world. The more that you can do those things, again, the more that you should be able to grow your influence. And the most important thing, again reiterated there, is that you need to set aside regular time to do this. So if you've decided that your story is the main thing that you need to work on, or your storytelling ability, then you need to think about how you can do that. So oh, I can give my own example. I know that storytelling is something I want to become better at. So some of the things that I've done to get better at that is I have an email list and I've sent my 250th email recently. So having to do that week upon week is helping me to tell a better story and send a better message. I've researched the art of storytelling, learning from other people who are better storytellers than I am and learning how a story works. And then I've also dabbled in some uh, fiction writing. I've dabbled in some actual stories that I've then put out there and shared online and given people the opportunity to critique so I can get better at telling stories. So there's just one example of how if I see that as something I need to work on, I can take a certain number of steps that I can focus on throughout the year or throughout several years to make a difference to myself in that area. Okay, moving on to the third point. So one thing that I think a lot of people get confused about is their online presence, by which I mean I think a lot of people who want to grow their influence or who generally just want to do well in their careers and are ambitious, worry about their online presence and what different sites they're on. So some people will say to me, oh, I don't really use LinkedIn very much. Um, or I just filled out a profile on there and then I didn't do much more. Some people will say they don't use Twitter very much. Some people don't have a website. The important thing to realise here is that you don't have to be on any social media site unless for some reason your work mandates that you, you need to do so for some reason. It's all about what works for you, what plays to your strengths, what you think you'll enjoy, and then critically, maybe because you enjoy it, you'll invest the time into to get better at and also to make sure that you understand how the particular platform works. So everyone likes different things. Some people really like to write a lot, some people like to talk, and some people don't like any of those things and prefer meeting people in person only. They don't like to present themselves online. All of these things are a choice. All of these things are possible and you can still have lots of influence. It's just worth knowing that it is a choice. So you should assess the range of options that you have out there and the ones that will work for you and give them a try. You shouldn't worry about being on all of them, 
but you should realize that everything is a choice so that if you're not on a particular platform and your audience is there, you might, and I'll go on to speak about audience, then you have to think of a way to get to them, a different way to get to them, okay? So everything's a choice. There are no right answers. There are some sites that will be particularly helpful or some means that will be particularly helpful depending on what you want to do. But it's all a choice. You need to take the time to think about what works for you. My second point there is that I think that consistency is key. So quite often I see people who have, for example, uh, a pretty good LinkedIn profile that they keep updated and a pretty good Twitter profile that they keep updated. But one of the things they don't do is have the same sort of, uh, the same photo, the same profile picture, uh, the same story in their bio or their main headline, and the same sort of messaging. Now, of course, the messaging is going to be different for the platform, but still, if you can get your basics right, so if you've got a good message to tell about who you are and what you do, then you want to be replicating that on as many places as possible because it reinforces the message and it helps people to understand what it is that you do. So same photo and messaging across a range of sites, range of professional sites, is something that I would recommend. Why I say professional sites, I mean, if you have, for example, a personal uh, Facebook profile, you can put whatever you want on that. You don't have to worry about absolutely everything, but think about the consistency of that messaging. And then finally for this slide and for this point, if somebody met you for the first time online, what would they think? So if somebody is tuning into my webinar and they haven't met me before, what things will they be picking up about me right now? If somebody listens to a podcast I've recorded, if someone stumbles across my Twitter profile, if somebody says, oh, there's this guy and I think you should check him out online, what is it that those people would see about you? And it's not just about whether it's a positive or a negative impression they'd get. I hope it would be a positive one. It's about the fact that actually, you, are you controlling the message properly? Because if you're not controlling the message, they might get a positive impression, but you won't be able to influence them the way that you want to. Okay, two more key points to make. So I've already spoken briefly about audience, and audience is absolutely key to this. One of the most crucial things in growing your influence is to work out who your audience is and how your audience might change over time. Who your audience is and how your audience might change over time. Okay. So whatever field that you work in, say if you run a business and you want to be able to influence people to buy your product, can you work out who your ideal customer is? And if you can work that out, can you then work out how you will reach? So as I've put here, where might your audience spend time? What messaging works for them? And what, if anything, do they already know about you? Okay. So you need to think of these sort of questions. So what I mean by spend time is it might be spend time online. It might be spend time doing things physically, going to different places. Where is your audience and how can you get to them? So just to give a very simple example, suppose you have a product that helps lawyers. So you have a, some sort of business that supports lawyers. How would you get to lawyers? Where do lawyers hang out? And where could you put an advert in a publication that a lawyer would read? Or how would you speak their language? Now, of course, real life examples might be much more complicated than this. For a start, you might, it might not just be lawyers in general, it might be a particular sub-branch of law. Where are those people congregating? What do they want to hear? And how can you influence them? And then finally there, you need to get good at listening to your audience and getting feedback from them. So you need to get good at listening to your audience, and listening is a difficult and a key skill, and one that many of us including myself, can improve that. L really listening to people and getting feedback from them about what their concerns are, how they'd like you to approach them, and you can build that feedback into everything that you do 
so that you become a more effective influencer. Okay, here's the final slide, and then I'll move on to the last section. So what you need to really do for yourself is to have a template for success if you want to grow your influence in 2021. Um, I've got a book which some people attending this call will hopefully have read, um, and it's How to Become an Influencer. And if you go to the link that's on the slide, um, then you can download it for free. You don't even need to sign up to my email list. You can download it straight from my website. That book at more than 100 pages uh, covers all the main areas of influence that I've identified, gives you some exercises to think about your own influence, and helps you to start the beginnings of a bit of a strategy to grow your influence. So that's the best resource that I can share with you. The second thing, though, is that whatever you do, you need to find a solution that works for you. You need to practice it, test, test it, get feedback from your audience about it, and then repeat it. And then you need to get better and better over time. So giving the example of the lawyers, if you try to reach out to them in one particular way, did it work? Were they convinced by your message? Do you have any new products you want to share? And if you do, will that be a dislike, need a slightly different approach? Repeat the things that work, the things that work, and learn from the things that don't work. And then the final point is that growing your influence is an art and a science at the same time. So there's some scientific aspects to it, uh, in as much as certain things will persuade people. Humans have certain motivations that you can appeal to. So there's a kind of a science, there's a, a, a side that can be backed up by research. And some of it is more than art. It's based on your feelings over time. What are you good at? What motivates you? How do people respond to you? How can you take your learning from other bits of your life and put them into the thing that you're doing right now in order to influence people more effectively? Okay. I'm going to start to wrap up and I'm going to give you the practical thing to do before we finish. So, what I really want you to think about is I'd like you to think about the five points that I've already given you that will hopefully give you an idea about how to grow your influence in 2021. Those are some of the key points. And if you missed the link to my, uh, my book, just go to the website, The Influence Expert, and you'll find it on there. And that's one of the things that will really be able to help you. But in the time that I have left with you, I would like you to write something down. And you can either write these points down and then fill it in later, or you can fill it in along with me, depending on what you want. So there's just three parts to this. So the first part is, I'd like you to answer the question of something you'd like to influence in 2021. That's something you'd like to influence in 2021. And I'll give my own examples to help you understand this. The second thing I'd like you to say is who is the key audience for this? And in certain cases, it could even be yourself. You might be trying to influence yourself to stop smoking, for example. So the audience could be yourself. You are a person who can be influenced as well. And in fact, thinking about how can you can be influenced by other people is very helpful in helping you understand how it is that you can influence others. So the next thing I want you to think about, the third thing, is the key way you can grow your influence in this area. The key way you can grow your influence in this area. So to, to explain that again, First, write down something you'd like to influence. Second, write the key audience, so who you would have to influence in order to get what you want. And third, the key way to grow your influence in this area. So I'll give an example that uh, is something that I'm thinking about. So for me, something I'd like to influence in 2021, something I'm very passionate about is youth leadership. And I've uh, run a small organization helping young people to join charity boards. So something I like to do is to uh, influence more young people to realize the sort of leadership uh, options and options to make a positive difference in the world that are there for them. And it's something I've been thinking about for a little while. 
So my key audience is young people, but I would drill down into that and say it's young people perhaps who already have um, a bit of an interest in uh, doing something good in the world, or it's young people between the ages of this age and that age. So in my case, it might typically be something like 15, 